Hello. Yes, this is going to um, combine perfectly with the previous sessions today. So designing with the user, ultimately, why are we here in the first place? We are here to support the people who are caring for patients. And if we have a confusing user interface, well, we're not really supporting them very well, are we? So um, that is one of the reasons it's so important to talk about UX. Now pay attention because we will be having a competition um, at the end in about 10 minutes at the end of these slides with uh, some activities for you to do yourself in a bit of a race. So um, one common question is, okay, you're an open source software project. Why invest in UX, which is our shorthand for user experience? Well, as we mentioned um, over the last few days, and as Jen mentioned earlier, it's very hard for our system to work together and for other teams around the world to work together well if our user experience and user interface is not consistent, as we've seen in our recent history. The other reason to invest in UX in any software that has a user-facing component is because research has shown that spending time on user experience actually leads to more efficient and cost-effective software. What do I mean? Well, there's this little company you might have heard of called IBM, and, and they actually did some research years ago to try to figure out what is the return on investment if we get design focus involved in software development early on. And their research showed repeatedly that late stage change requests become very expensive in software. And so they, they created this thing commonly known as the 110-100 rule of change, by which I mean, um, to make a change to some piece of software, let's say initially during your research, you find you need to make a change to something you are planning, uh, costs you about um, $1 worth relative to if you were to make the changes to the designs later, just the designs, not the software, that's about 10 times more expensive. But if you were to make the change all the way after the software has already been encoded, that's about 100 times more expensive. So the idea is that by thinking about our users from the beginning, we're actually saving everyone's time and um, cost investment. This requires thinking, are we actually focusing on the right problems? Often as people who are technical or just um, keen and conscientious, we, we all want to dive in and do something and have our PRs merged. But that's not necessarily right because first we must focus on the right problem. How do you know you're focusing on the right problem? This is why we start talking about the difference between UI and UX, user interface and user experience. This tomato sauce example is a common way of explaining the difference between UI and UX, user interface and user experience. You might've seen this tomato sauce glass bottle before. And while when you first buy it, it looks really attractive, when you actually use it over time, there are all kinds of experience things that aren't great for you as a user. Like the cap gets all gunky and gummy and isn't nice to touch. Your sauce is all at the bottom and it's hard to get it out. And when you finally do get it out, it spills all over the place. And you don't really have much precision um, in terms of the amount of sauce you can apply using the bottle. So over time, we now know that the tomato sauce bottles evolved. Now we have a nice interface and a nice experience. There's no more gummy top uh, because it's up down here. Uh, the way that it's upside down means the sauce is always at the bottom and it's you have more control as a user of um, making your happy faces on your, on your sandwich. So that's the difference between user interface and user experience. Let's give a more um, practical example when it comes to OpenMRS. Uh, you might recognize this screen. It's from OpenMRS version two. Uh, this is during the registration. Often when we see people write a user need or a user story, we'll see them write it like this. I need to register a patient. Well, okay, but why? What else is going on for you? In this example, when the person wrote this user story, they were only thinking about the user sitting in front of a screen. But what if we zoomed out? 
What if we looked at the wider context that that user was experiencing beyond just our interface? Well, now suddenly we see that this registration clerk, gosh, look at the huge lineup she's dealing with. She's got people all around her saying, hey, I need to see the doctor, I need to see the doctor. There's a lot of intensity happening for her in this moment. And so actually, her user story is, I need to get people checked in fast. That changes the way we think about the registration feature. Let me give you a real world example that we ran into when we were designing OpenMRS3, specifically the patient list feature. So at first we thought to ourselves, we need patient lists, a way of recording um, any kind of list you might want. So for example, maybe a clinician would want a list of patients who haven't have been missing their appointments or are lost to follow up. Um, so we created that feature, but as we did more user interviews and more user research, we discovered this repeated request from users. They would say or show us, I need to quickly switch to my next patient because the queue outside my door is so long and every moment matters. So that ended up in us adding a way for the clinician to go directly from one patient chart open a list on the side and click on another patient subsequently. That's a much faster workflow for them when they're switching from patient to patient to patient. Sorry, I got uh, my system hung up a bit there. All right, um, so how, how have we been doing this over the last while um, in order to avoid, in order to have a shared design system um, and not be in this uh, multiple different uh, user experiences situation that we've been in in the past. Well, over the last three years, we've been really lucky. Multiple community organizations banded together and funded a lot of user experience research, design, and uh, user acceptance testing time. And we're really grateful to the folks in all these photos who um, facilitated both in-person site visits as well as repeated testing uh, with different types of users, both clinicians and non-clinical people. As a result, we worked through quite a number of research questions. Um, I will share the link to the slides again, but if you're interested in looking at any of them, you're welcome to do so. Once we researched those different questions, things like, for example, how does a really busy clerk or nurse or um, clinical officer navigate around the medical record or expect to get around quickly. That then informed how we thought about, okay, how do we take everything we're seeing three years ago and turn it into a consistent user experience? We realized that there were a number of ways in OpenMRS2 that we could improve on the user experience um, and uh, user interface consistency. For example, this is a screenshot um, of a feature that was built using our previous style guide. But you can see here, there's a bunch of uh, things that are unclear or maybe inconsistent. Like for example, these fields aren't aligned, the spacing is inconsistent here, the input lengths are different. We're suddenly using capital letter letters here for some reason. Um, the save button is way over here and uh, there's all kinds of color gradients going on. So we did this big review to try to decide, is there a standardized design system or style guide that we should be using? Uh, and so we compared several options. We looked at, uh, we actually looked at Bootstrap as well, but we also looked at Salesforce's Lightning Design, Atlassian's Design Guide and Carbon Design System. This is the same feature, but using a consistent design system to lay it out. Ultimately, after a lot of community discussion, uh, and you can read more on our wiki if you want to understand why we chose a third-party design system rather than our own um, totally custom style guide, uh, you can read more about that on the wiki at the link, which I'll share later. But uh, so we ended up choosing Carbon Design System. This is its own open source community. Uh, it was originally kicked off by IBM. It's the same design system that IBM uses and, and supports. Why are we using a third party style guide or design system in this case? Well, the biggest reasons were 
our users want a consistent and professional front end UI, but we also need it to be easy for new volunteers or new developers or new designers to contribute meaningfully and quickly. But the reality is that we have limited design resources and the designers that do become available in our community, we want to use their time very efficiently. It also costs a lot to maintain your own custom style guide. So our starting place is carbon design system. You might wanna remember that for later. So for example, when it comes to uh, how a button is laid out, we might go to carbondesignsystem.com, as you can see on my big screen here. And then if I wanted to know uh, how, how does carbon recommend I handle a button component or a breadcrumb or accordion component, I can see that in their uh, website, which has really fantastic documentation such as here are their different typical styles of buttons. And I can even explore, okay, if I, if I change the style of button, how is it supposed to change and look and how do I interact with it? Carbon goes even deeper in having code examples of those components. So for example, uh, we're primarily using React for their, the OpenMRS3 front end. So if you wanted an example of how the button component code comes together, They've already documented all of that for us as something you can explore. It's a fantastic resource and does really expedite our O3 work. But it doesn't end there because Carbon doesn't always have everything we need. For example, Carbon um, is not specifically designed for medical care. And some of the colors and things uh, were, were important that we make more standardized for OpenMRS. That led us to use a tool called Zeppelin you don't all need access to it, but I'll just show it to you so you're aware uh, that it exists. Um, unfortunately, we, we have to give people uh, accounts to access it. But this is where we store any new design that might be implemented. So for example, here's a, a good example of a design um, that's been set up for a developer to implement, and it all lives here on Zeppelin. The other benefit of Zeppelin is that it gives us a style guide where you can see all kinds of things like our standard O3 colors, as well as all kinds of ways that we have customized carbon design specifically for O3. So some of those buttons, for example, you can see what we recommend they look like in the O3 app. All right, uh, let's continue. So please, um, if you haven't already done it uh, on day one, make sure the one resource that you bookmark when it comes to design is our UI pattern library. And the short link is just om.rs forward slash O3 UI. And I'll show you why. Because anytime you are starting to think about whether you're a developer or project manager or business analyst, et cetera, if you're starting to think about, hmm, I think we need a new feature for such and such, what might all, what guidance might already exist? Let's go ahead and look at drugs, for example. Say you're working on something involving medications. We've actually created quite a bit of detailed guidance about how things should look and feel in OpenMRS. Another example is the left panel. If you wanted to change something in how this left panel and the patient chart looks, we've got guidance for you to follow so that you can still do what you need as an implementer while keeping it consistent so that you can still use work that other organizations do and they can also benefit from your work so that we're not getting into this duplicated world again. In fact, you can see we um, ran into that even in OpenMRS 2. Uh, all right. so. Let's continue. We are almost at the competition. All right, competition number one. The first person to find the O3 pattern, UI pattern for the data tile. If you can find the link, the web link to that and put it in the chat, the first person to successfully do that wins. Okay, we've already got a submission from Marion B here, whoops. Uh, let's go ahead and look at the link that she shared. Perfect. Marion, you win the first competition. Bravo to Marion B. 
So here we see the UI pattern for the data tile. This is a very commonly used um, component because we have so many people using OpenMRS3 who typically end up wanting their own um, component with a list of say, um, uh, say you're working on a maternity feature, you might want a list of um, recent maternity appointments and how should that look as a user interface. The data tile would help you with that. Next competition, to be the first person who can find the pattern, the O3 pattern for the patient header action menu. So this is a little more detailed. Specifically, what should the action menu look like in a patient header? Well done, we've got a submission already from Wynn. All right, so specifically, if you were to scroll down, you might be able to see the link. There's a little link guy if you hover over the title. See if you can find the link specifically for the section called Action Menu. We've got a submission from Benjamin. Here we go. Fantastic. Benjamin, you win that competition, and you're exactly right. So often we'll get questions about, hey, I want to add a quick action. Where does it go? How should that interaction look or feel? And this is an example of where you would find that guidance. These are not meant to be um, rigid rules, but they are meant to be followed as closely as possible so that, again, we can reuse each other's work as an open source community and not end up uh, stuck, uh, you stuck alone maintaining your own things if you don't want to. Well done. All right, competition number three and four coming up now. We're gonna move into carbon design systems specifically. Uh, let's say you needed to encode a modal. You would notice that there isn't any, there's a couple of modal kind of general uh, guidances, but there's no one specific modal guidance, um, this one's specific to help, but there's nothing in general for modals. So what you would do then is you would want to see, okay, how does Carbon recommend I set up a modal? So who can be the first person to find in the Carbon design system how Carbon recommends you set up the modal component? Okay, we've got one from Ibrahima. Thank you so much, Ibrahima. This one is in zero height. Okay, we've got one from Marion. We're looking for the carbon component. Bravo, Marion. She has found the modal carbon component. So here we're in the carbon design system website. If you ever feel lost in carbon, you can always use this search icon up here. So we're specifically going to look for example for modal and you can see that also took us here without having to go through the um, table of contents here. So here there's all kinds of things in Carbon uh, that are explaining how to use this. Um, you might see there's different themes to choose from. Um, there's different types of modals like danger modals, full width and so on. But these are uh, giving you all the ideas on uh, what, what this looks like and the interaction. So well done, Marion, for your second competition win. Last but not least, here we go. Now, who can be the first person to find the carbon modal components sample react code. This will require, require a little more digging. Who can be the first one to find that? All right, we've got a submission already from Mbubazi. Oh, we've got quite a few also from Jonathan Muta. Thank you. All right, so specifically, you would click the code button uh, for additional kind of guidance here. But yes, uh, all three of you are correct. And since your chats came in at basically the same time, I'll say you all won that competition. Bravo, everyone. Now, speaking of modals, what would you do next? If you'd been asked to implement a modal something, how would you take what you learned from Carbon and make sure that it looks consistent in OpenMRS3. Well, if you were a community developer, a community member developing O3 features, uh, you would just reach out and we would give you access to the um, style guide. And then 
all you would do is you would find the modal style guide suggestion. As you can see here, we, we just recommend how you adjust the coloring. So there's not too much different than carbon most of the time. There are just sometimes some small adjustments. So going back to carbon again, you can see the difference here between how this one looks, how this one looks. It's really just sound coloring. Well done, everyone. Okay, let's keep going. If you have questions when it comes to the user interface, uh, we do recommend using the OpenMRS Slack. We have two channels that are specifically of interest, the UX Design Advisory Channel and the OpenMRS 3 channel. You can uh, see some really good recent examples there already.